Welcome, I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains, where I welcome all modelers into my shop and show you firsthand how I do model railroading. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I combine two kits from Foss Scale Models to create Yellow Cab Taxi Garage. Hope you enjoy the video. So for our new project, we are using two kits from Foss Scale Models. We are using Crawley Auto, which is $29.95 on their website. And we are using a free kit that they offered. Now, Foss Scale Models once a year offers a free kit for a very limited time. Um, these are some pictures of kits that they've offered in the past. So be sure to follow their Facebook page or their website um, to be sure you're notified when uh, they offer the free kit. This is a drawing I did of the two models that we'll be combining. Um, the inspiration for this project came from this great HO scale taxi cab, which is made from, made by uh, Classic Model, sorry, Classic Metal Works. I am changing um, the kit on the side a little bit by adding some length to it. You can see here, this kit is, it's pretty short. So I am just simply going to add some length to it um, using some uh, extra wood that I have. But you can just build it like this and simply uh, put it in front of it or on the side of it or even the other side you can put it over here. So I've already gotten started with the project and here are all the walls that we're going to be using and you can see I've added uh, bracing to the back of them using 1 8 inch thick uh, wood. Just simply glued it onto the backs um, just to prevent any warping Next, we will be um, putting a stain, a wash created with uh, acrylic paint and water. And we'll simply brush a stain on all of the front of the walls. So I just put a stain on the walls and I simply used black and burnt umber. And I just put the corner of my brush in the brown, put some on the palette. Dabbed a little bit of the black on my brush and also put that on the palette. Then added lots of water to it. I then brushed it over the front of the wall going the same direction as the clapboard. And then also at the same time, I brushed the wash over the back of the wall this will prevent it from warping. Next we are going to paint the walls a yellow. I'm starting out with desert sand and cadmium yellow. So it's mostly the tan and a little bit of the yellow. So I've mixed the two colors together and the reason for the two colors is because I wanted it to look like the, the yellow-orange has been faded by the sun over the years. Now we will simply drag it lightly over the surface, kind of like dry brushing. This is going to give us a, a peeled paint look. So 
So you want to put your paint in the crack underneath uh, the board and leave the edge uh, more of the bare wood. Because the edge of the, the clapboards, uh, the paint would start to chip off more on the edge rather than in the crack. And yes, this is a very long and tedious process, <laughs> but uh, I think it gives you the best result. Now the paint would be protected uh, underneath the overhang, so you would put on more paint um, towards the top edge of it. I know it's probably hard to see. But. So as you can see, I have finished all of the yellow. And yes, it did take a while. <laughs> uh. You can see I added a little bit of orange up towards the top where the overhang would be. And I also forgot to mention that I had to uh, mask the bottom part of the walls uh, that are going to be red. So next, we need to paint the windows and the doors to match the the bare wood color that we've stained so i'm just mixing desert sand burnt umber and a little bit of black and you can see i've uh tested some up in the corner and so you just want to just try to just try to get close and match uh, because then what we'll do is we'll dry brush uh, the red paint color over this after it dries. We just want it to look like um, bare wood instead of gray plastic. So when you're mixing your paints, I just dab a little in each and and mix it and you don't have to mix it until it's a solid consistency you can see there's all lines in it it's not completely mixed together and that's okay because you're wanting to represent a wood grain and even when you apply it to the uh, the gray plastic it doesn't need to be a solid coverage because again you want there to be a uh, a wood grain texture to it if it gets a little light just add a little bit of you know your other color in it each window doesn't have to match um, because if these were actually made out of wood um, they they wouldn't all match they would have different wood grain texture to them so as you can see i'm just really brushing it on randomly again trying to create um wood texture i think too many people um try to make it an exact science where they want to be told 50% of this color, 30% of this color, 20% of this. Mix it to a solid consistency 
and uh, it's it, it doesn't give it a natural look by doing that by just going with random colors not mixing it to a solid color uh, and brushing it on randomly gives it way more of a uh, natural look so I placed a door in a window in the wall just to show you that we're just trying to match uh, the bare wood color on the bottom part now we'll go over this with a red and we'll go over all the doors windows and trim with red and we're using heritage brick by americana the heritage brick uh, was a little too brown so i ended up adding a little bit of deep red to it just because I wanted to match um, the red on the car a little bit more. So as you can see, I think it's a little bit better match. So now I am lightly dry brushing over the walls with light gray. It's actually called Steel Gray by Folk Art. So this wall here is not done, and this wall here is done. I don't know if you can see the difference. Possibly in the red, you'll be able to tell. Gives it even more of a chipped paint look. You're just lightly going over the raised part of the clapboard so I'm using the same dry brush effect on the windows and doors too so so these two here are done and these aren't and you're just very lightly going over it with the gray just to give it a a sun faded look and also a, a chipped paint look so I've put the windows and doors in and after they were in place I dry brushed over the walls again with desert sand and a little bit of vintage white So this is where we're at so far. As you can see, uh, I extended the side. So I had realized that I made a mistake. Um, I had put trim inside the opening of both the garage doors. And the doors go all the way to the edge and the kit comes with pre-cut trim that goes around the outside of the door so I just simply um, took all the trim that I had on there and, and took it off another thing was uh, the door Um, the kit comes with a door that I had just simply moved to the front, which is okay. You can do that. But uh, the, the kit here in the front comes with a door that's a two-part door that gives you a little more detail and I think looks a little nicer. I also wanted to mention that one door will be closed and the other door 
I have scored it so that I could bend it to make it look like it's half opened. So all of the doors um, are glued in place. I've also added lots of signs. As you can see, there's uh, a little newspaper stand or a magazine stand on the side. All of the signs, I wanted to look like uh, metal. So what I did was I took a number two pencil and poked holes in the corners to represent nail holes. So the smokestack and chimneys are in place. The smokestack uh, came with the kit and for the uh, smokestack here I just used a drinking straw and then for this smokestack it's just a round piece of plastic. Um, the drinking straw um, is actually this right here and Burger King actually has these. Here is my collection of Burger King straws. This will last me the rest of my life. So next, I want to add the sign to the top of the building and the arrow sign that hangs on the side. So what I've done is, on the computer, I created the signs and then printed them out. After I printed them, I cut out these two signs and glued them onto chipboard. Now I'll cut them out and after I cut this one out, I will glue this one to the back side of it. So after I glued the signs onto the chipboard, I took some burnt umber and a sponge and dabbed on some of the burnt umber to create a rust effect. I then took some orange colored pastel chalks and streaked them down. Next, I'm going to use silver And again, dab my sponge on it. And just dab a little bit on here. Just to give the illusion that the paint is chipping off and the metal underneath is showing through. So we're going to go heavier towards the top of the sign and we're not going to do any um, towards the bottom. So to apply our arrow sign to the side, we are going to use straight pins and I'm going to drill two holes into the side of it.
I'm using straight pins for sewing uh, and all I did was simply cut the heads of them off. Now we'll make sure that they're straight. I'm trying to do it at an angle where you can see uh, what I'm doing. So I'm just pressing it in to mark the holes and then I'll uh, drill it. I had forgot to mention that on the arrow sign, I glued it to chipboard, but then it wasn't thick enough. So I then glued it just to a regular piece of mat board, just to give it some more thickness. In hindsight, I should have used a thicker material, because as you can see, I wanted that sign to look uh, pretty thick, and then also to give me enough thickness to be able to drill my holes to um, add my pins. Well, we are very close to uh, almost being done with this project. I wanted to show you the signs that are in place. For the sign on the very top, I just took a uh, strip wood and braced it on the back. The only thing left to do is to paint and install lamps above the two doors here and a small lamp above the uh, front door. Well, I think that wraps things up for this kit. I will give you a little closer look at some of the stuff. You can see I added two lamps above each garage door. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was such a fun project to build. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, working with FOSS scale model kits. Uh, the instructions are always very well written. They assemble very easily. Um, I, I really like working with, with their models. Um, the inspiration really for this model came from this little HO scale car. Many of you may have seen this being built 
on Facebook and uh, I've received a lot of questions on it um, probably the two most popular questions are where did you get the HO scale taxi cab and the answer to that question is a company called classic metalworks um, another popular question is where did you get the magazines uh, for the model the magazines actually came in the kit the free kit um, the front part of the taxi garage um, and it came from Foss scale models but you can take any image off of the internet or scan magazines into your computer and shrink them down and print them out and cut them and, and glue them on um, I believe HO scale magazine these are one eighth of an inch wide hopefully that helps again I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned some new uh, tricks and tips from it please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I upload more videos I have a lot of exciting videos planned uh, for this year so please subscribe and and share it with your friends thanks for watching happy modeling